Many songs are written and many people sing, but far too few are singing for the King. We need more among us to bless the name of Jesus. Yes, we need more singing for the King. privilege it is to serve the king above all kings, the great I am. Words fail when we try to describe him. To know him is to love him. It is indeed a privilege to serve the king. It is indeed a privilege to serve the king. We would have to stoop from the service of the king of kings to be an earthly queen. One would think of a king being tyrannical and hard, but not so with the king of kings. As you said, to know him is to love him. <laughs>
today don't know who jesus is they've never felt his peace within their soul but i want my life to show them how his love can set them free he's the only one who can cleanse and make man whole history has ever been so significant, so powerful, or so meaningful. His name is to be praised above every name. Other kings and kingdoms have come and gone and are now forgotten, but this king lives on and on. He is worthy of all our praises. why his name is to be lifted up above all other names. Once you know his transforming power in your life, you know only Jesus can make such a difference. Praise is due him because he has the power to make us just what we ought to be, even kids. To experience complete deliverance from sin always calls for praise.
Jesus made the difference, made the difference in me. Jesus made the difference for me. He filled my soul full power, and I'm shouting the victory. For Jesus made the difference, made the difference in me. Knowing him makes serving him a great privilege. To sacrifice is too great to share. The beautiful gospel story with those who have not experienced the wonderful peace and happiness Jesus gives. It is such a blessing to know that Jesus is working through you to help others find the upward path. We choose the best when we give ourselves to the Lord and let him use us in any way he chooses. There are so many benefits in knowing the great I am and willingly serving him. He is just everything we could ever possibly need. Do you know that there are hundreds of names and titles ascribed to this great king? Time would not burn us to tell all this lovely ma name means. Let's share some of them.
much power and victory in the name of Jesus. Just think, it is this name that causes darkness to flee, sins chains to be broken, and sick bodies to be made whole. Don't forget, he can give us victory over Satan. In the face of all temptation, we can be overcomers through the name of Jesus. How could we bless his name enough? Yeah. 
mean that serving the King of Kings is not the way to get much gain, but how wrong they are. The best in life is found in knowing and serving him. I don't feel I'm missing a thing. bottom line, you just must conclude that it pays in every way to serve the King of Kings. No wonder God's word declares that his name is above all others.
until he does return in clouds of glory. It would please the King of Kings that the pilgrims continue to blaze new trails and reach out to the lost and dying world. Brother Sutherland and Brother Nichols, please come to the platform. A great charge has been given to you, Brother Sutherland. Many eyes are on you. Many will be watching the direction you will take and the course you chart for the conference. Seek earnestly God's leadership. Never let the opinions of others, nor the influence of Satan in the world, blind your judgment. Never seek the favor of men, but, al <clears throat> but always the approval of God in your decisions as you step into this place of leadership. Always ask for the old paths, wherein is a good way. At me. As you so very well know, the Pilgrim Conference was brought about through many battles. As a symbol of those battles already fought and won, we present you with this sword. Take it and remember that swords are not made to be polished, wrapped up in a cloth, and placed on a shelf. They are made to be used in battles. Fight faithfully onward. There are many reasons to be faithful in the battles that yet lie ahead. There is a cause. Many of these children standing on this platform will be touched and influenced by your leadership. So 
I can remember back as a little boy playing in a yard um, just not far from where my folks my mom lives today when a couple of Nazarene ladies saints of God that shouted and and uh, knew the glory got it on their hearts to uh, travel down the country roads trying to find people that didn't go to church and they stopped at our house. I, I remember I was about the size of the smallest one that came past to shake my hand then to go. And my brother and I were playing out under an old maple tree, and I saw that old car pull in. <clears throat> and two ladies got out. One of them, they had their hair fashioned in the old-fashioned pilgrim way. One of them was dark-headed. The other one had silver-gray hair. And they approached us and asked if her mom was handy. And Pretty soon they were in the living room talking to my mother and 
Coleman and I looked through the screen door and everything seemed to be all right. And, uh, but there was something that took place in that living room that touched my mother's heart. And they prayed with her. And pretty soon Daddy came in from the fields. And some point between that time and Sunday, my mother blurted out and said, You know, Otha, we've got to get these boys in church. We don't want them to grow up to be heathen. And uh, Daddy said, We don't even know anybody that goes to church. What will we do? And she said, There were two ladies that stopped here. And they went to a little, they call it a holiness church, whatever that means. But up at Darnaby's Grocery, there's the church on the left. And we went that Sunday, and there was something that got a hold of my mom and my dad and got a hold of me. Praise God. <clears throat> but you know, over those years, as the glory of God settled in, that very first service, I mean, they shouted and praised God, and that just became the norm in our family. But I appreciate the heritage that God has given us. And then across those years, when I finally came to that point on a cold January night when I was 17 years old, and God knew that I was at the crossroads of my life, that's why he said it's tonight or never. And I thank God that I took a right turn. and been turning right ever since by the grace of God. But you know, life is a virtual minefield. And the devil has all kinds of tricks and snares and devices. But I thank God for the memories that I have this morning of many a camp meeting where the blessing of God has come over the years. And those things that are riveted to our mind are these precious children like we see right here today. I, you know, it, it ought to solidify every, every time we see them in this fashion, our commitment to keeping an old-fashioned holiness camp alive. And the charge that they gave me this morning, I'm, I take it seriously. And I'm asking God to search my heart. And um, as I go from this camp meeting uh, tomorrow and through these coming days, um, I want to respond to the children and say that by the best of, of my ability, I intend to seek the face of God on every issue. And I don't intend to be battered abound by every, every wind that passes in any direction. But I want the Holy Ghost to be our leader. And I want to do everything in my power to keep the blessing of God upon my life. And I want to direct those that God has given me responsibility for to continue in the old-fashioned holiness way and keep the blessing of God upon us. And I want to see this church go forward and see it grow. And I don't want to put one track as a stumbling block for any one of these precious children. But we want to make sure that the path is straight and they can find their way to heaven and live a clean, holy life. So I take the charge seriously. I ask all of you to pray for us. And uh, it won't be but just a blur of time if Jesus tarries. I've already found this to come to pass. These little guys up here, they're going to be presenting us with spiritual grandchildren. It's just the way it is. It's shocking to me. I had to ask my wife, now who's that one and who's that one? And uh, just a blink of eyes ago, uh, their parents were 14, 15 years old running around the campground. I said, I don't believe this. Honey, you must be getting old. But anyway, <laughs> time is passing and uh, thank you very much. And also, the, I thank the children for the good offering. A thousand dollars they gleaned to uh, put in our offering and uh, thank you. And I want to thank also the Victory Trio. Amen. Penny and Mary. They do it every year. I don't know how they do it, but they've done it again. Exalting the name of Jesus, and we just praise God for it. And I want to thank all of you parents for being here and standing by the camp. And let's continue. Let's go forward with the glory of God over our heads and in our hearts. Thank you very much. God bless you.